Hello, my name is Frank Kutka and I live here in Dickinson, North Dakota. One of my hobbies is corn breeding and I've had many adventures with David Christensen on our Seed We Need project. This video is going to be about a new project we're undertaking to incorporate a trait called gametophytic incompatibility into varieties of corn that can be used to help keep organic corn pure from transgenes and other contamination. This video will explain the genes behind the trait, how the trait works, and how it is we might make use of this genetic tool to help keep organic corn pure. The corn tassel contains the many hundreds of male flowers of the corn plant. During pollen shed, you can see pollen drop by the millions of grains. The pollen is born on the wind and is carried to the female flowers. The ear on the corn plant is a collection of female flowers. Each of them has a single silk, which is a stigmatic surface reaching out from the husks. Each of these then leads down to a single ovule. When pollen lands on the silks, something miraculous happens. A very small tube grows from individual pollen down the entire length of the silks, sometimes several inches, down to these ovules. When the pollen tube gets to the ovules, nuclei will be exchanged, forming both the new embryo and then also separately in a second uh, fertilization, the endosperm of the eventual corn kernels. Most corn is perfectly compatible with the pollen from other corn. Pollen is blown on the wind to wherever it might land and when it gets onto a silk it will grow a pollen tube and fertilize the egg and create a new seed bearing genetic material from both the father plant and the mother plant. This has been a problem for organic agriculture because sometimes the pollen blowing on the wind carries transgenes which aren't allowed under certification rules. The traits we're going to discuss help circumvent this normal pollination because most corn does not carry these traits. These two hills of corn are a special type. There are three different genes naturally occurring in corn and its wild relative Teosinte which change the uh, pattern of fertilization. These genes are GA1S, found in the South American popcorn, and then GA2S and TCB1S, both found in Teosinte. When plants have any one of these three genes in a homozygous form, so that they have two copies, they will not support normal pollen tube growth if the pollen that lands on the silks is not carrying that exact same gene. This is called gametophytic incompatibility. The gamete fights, the, uh, the pollen and the ovules, don't get together when they don't have the same genes if these genes are present. So, this is how this works. If we have plants that are GA1S and are homozygous, plants that don't carry the GA1S or they carry any of the other of the uh, incompatibility traits, those pollen will grow tubes very, very slowly. Pollen that carries GA1S, if landing on the same silk, will easily outgrow and outcompete that particular uh, pollen from other plants and will rapidly get there and carry out fertilization. This sets up a fairly effective screen for reducing fertilization from any unwanted pollen that doesn't carry these traits. GA1S has been used for decades to keep popcorn pure and we can use any of these three traits to help prevent outcrossing with any plants that don't carry them and in this case most corn doesn't carry any of these three traits and that includes most all of the transgenic corn that's currently on the market today. These traits, when combined with other 
tools could greatly help reduce the amount of unwanted outcrossing that we can see currently in corn grown under organic conditions. This corn plant growing in my vegetable garden is an example of what we call a volunteer and it raises an important issue with using gametophytic incompatibility as a trait to help prevent unwanted outcrossing. However, should volunteers appear in your neighbor's field the following year, those volunteer plants could very well carry both the gametophytic incompatibility trait and the transgenic product. This will make a situation that requires some care. To prevent unwanted outcrossing in those following seasons, all the tools that we currently use to prevent unwanted outcrossing with transgenic products, planting different varieties with non-synchronous flowering, planting at different times, planting some distance away, only harvesting within an area that is bordered by uh, some number of rows of our variety. All of those tools will have to be used. We will certainly want to rotate away from our neighbor's field and we want to communicate with our neighbor the importance of controlling volunteers in their field as they could very well uh, create a contamination problem for your corn once more. Gametophytic incompatibility is an important tool which can greatly reduce unwanted outcrossing. It's been quite successful with popcorns and it is already being used to some degree in field corns and I expect we'll see more of its use as time goes on. However, it is not complete and we'll have to use all of our tools in an integrated fashion in order to prevent unwanted outcrossing with transgenic products to keep organic products pure and to keep organic corn the important part of our rotations that it currently is today. This corn nursery in western North Dakota is one of several around the country where open pollinated varieties and inbred lines both are being converted to carry gametophytic incompatibility traits to help reduce the amount of outcrossing with transgenic products in our organic corn varieties. Corn is an important crop in organic farming throughout the world. It's productive and it's profitable and it sure belongs. Corn is great to grow almost anywhere, even here in Dickinson, North Dakota. I would like to briefly summarize what we've talked about with gametophytic incompatibility. There are three genes for this trait. They all are natural and come from corn or its wild relatives. They have been bred into corn to reduce unwanted outcrossing and we are doing more work currently to increase the number of varieties that carry these traits. The trait reduces unwanted outcrossing with varieties that don't carry the genes. So much so that uh, outcrossing can be reduced down to as little as between 0 and 5 percent in immediately adjoining fields. With fields with some distance and any desynchronous uh, pollination, the amount of outcrossing should be extremely reduced over current levels. The trait is a part of a suite of tools that we have to reduce unwanted outcrossing with transgenic products. All our tools will have to be used in an integrated fashion. We will especially have to be aware of volunteers in our neighbor's fields where transgenic products are planted. However, the tool is very, very effective. It's been very good in popcorn for a very long time and hopefully with projects like mine, funded by the Organic Farming Research Foundation, projects at Cornell University, projects at Michael Fields Ag Institute, projects at North Carolina State University, and others, we'll see many new varieties available for organic farmers that carry these traits so that unwanted outcrossing with transgenes will be greatly reduced or eliminated. Thank you.